Real-time ray tracing is now. And I'm going to show it to you. I don't even have any uh, RTX hardware. I got Daz Studio here. And that uses NVIDIA's iRay, which has um, denoising built into it, which is probably very similar to what they are using in their hybrid ray tracing technology. But this is full ray tracing. And I'm trying to duplicate uh, the settings that I believe that they use with hybrid, um, but again, with full. So um, the max samples is very low. A little bit higher than what I think Jensen said they use. I think he said they only do three. This is doing 10. Uh, but it only resolves to that when I'm staying still. I mean, the real time part, it's usually like one or, well, probably like three samples, three or four. And this is on a 1080 Ti. And you can see you got reflections and there's like a, it's a car paint floor that's all uh, colorful and everything. It has a little bit of flake in it, which is nice. You got a wood block and you got this emissive uh, cylinder going on here. And it's relatively real time. You can see the denoising works. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, the texture on this wood is really crap, so whatever. The shadows uh, are doing their real shadow thing where they're blurry, far away from uh, the object and all that business. You can see here I'm going to zoom in. You're going to get real close here to this, this floor so you can see uh, how the shadows are hard when they begin and they're soft as it falls away. Remember, th this is real time and not on RTX hardware using NVIDIA technology. This is way different than that previous video I did with the Unreal Engine where it was voxel-based uh, lighting and all that. This is full ray tracing in a professional piece of software. I'm not really sure why uh, dedicated hardware built for ray tracing using a hybrid technology is getting such low performance. And I'm referencing the, um, the Battlefield 5 uh, benchmarks and everything that I've seen so far. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. There, need, there must be some optimization that needs to be done because I mean, this is full scene ray tracing right here. And I would imagine if most of it was rasterized and then the rest of it was, you know, just the reflections and a, a, a little bit of the, um, the uh, light transfer and all that stuff was ray traced, that it would be a whole lot faster. Like th it would be viable on a 1080 Ti, which is saying a lot. Right now I just turned down a directional light in the scene. And I turned up this point light. This point light is an area light, it's a sphere object, which is what allows it to have softer shadows because you can't make something soft if everything's all the rays are coming from one individual point. Which is what a point light would be if it wasn't an area sphere. And obviously there is uh, the environment that the scene is in. So right now I'm going to change uh, the floor surface. Maybe this like bathroom tile kind of thing. And you could see how the, the reflections fall off a lot differently. And you could see the shadows a whole lot more clear. And that's why I'm getting down here on the onto the floor, is because you could see uh, the reflections a whole lot better. 
I guess that's uh, Fresnel business. So let's let's hide this light. Put it in the ground. And you can see it's all real time business. And let's make that cylinder a little bit more emissive. A lot more emissive. And let's move it around a little bit and see how uh, shadows play around with an emissive object with ray tracing. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm not sure if I had RTX hardware, if that would be enabled uh, for iRay and optics acceleration and all that. I don't think it uses those cores and all that die space for this yet, but I'm, I'm not sure. I don't have the hardware. I would test it if I did. Even if it was low-end stuff, I would still test it. I mean, it has the dedicated die space for it. Kind of makes you wonder why don't they just do a a GTX twenty eighty Ti without any ray tracing cores, any tensor cores, and then release a standalone uh, physics accelerator card kind of thing that just has RT cores on it. It only does that. I mean, I don't know if you need NVLink for that. I don't know what you need for that. NVLink, if it could just do it over uh, the PCI Express, or they could figure out some deferred way to, to, to do that without having them have to necessarily talk to each other. I don't, I don't know. But, I don't know. Seems like a thing. You can see I just added this little robot guy. Let's bring the light back in so you can see the robot better. And now I'm going to mess with, uh, after we get a nice up close look at him, I'm going to mess with some uh, depth of field because that's physically based. That's ray traced. That's, that's a thing that can be calculated. Because what, what, is, what is that? Dispersion something? And you can see the eyes are emissive. And as the scene uh, stays still, uh, more iterations get built up over time. And uh, it looks better. But with the noise removal, uh, e even though the noise removal that uh, only works on, I think, the second frame is what I said it. It, it, it looks passable. It's not great. But then again, it's noise removing the whole scene because the whole scene's ray traced. It's not hybrid. So this is completely different, but it is um, applicable to thoughts that you might want to develop about uh, how you feel about ray tracing and RTX in general. I guess a weird thing with this is I could set values that uh, can't happen in the real world. A good way to put it. So you could do really interesting things uh, when it comes to the depth of field and the f-stop and the focus range and all that. Whoa. Yeah, for some reason, looking directly at his head, it just, it just yeah, that's not real time anymore. <laughs> We're just going to suffer around with this for a little bit as I mess around. Yeah, that's looking a lot better.
So while I'm messing around with this, leave your comments down below on how you feel about the RTX technology. AMD not uh, basically saying that they're not going to support it. Uh, I don't know if that, that stance has changed, but I think they should. I mean, they kind of have the processing power, the compute power. I don't think they necessarily need dedicated things to do it, but this isn't going to gain a foothold unless more things support it. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, sorry that it took up 10 minutes of your time, but hope you learned something from it. hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, comment down below on your thoughts about ray tracing in general or RTX or uh, how NVIDIA or AMD are handling all this. Subscribe if you want, like if you want, and uh, I'll see everybody later.